A lot of people have asked me, Hey, why haven't you talked about Rick Santorum? He came in a close second in Iowa. He was only like nine votes away from tying with Romney. You should talk about the guy. You need to talk about Rick Santorum. All right. I'll, I'll fucking oblige. I'll talk about Rick Santorum. But let me tell you why I haven't talked about Rick Santorum. Because I don't know how. I don't know how I can insult Rick Santorum. How do you insult something that is already the very lowliest and most wretched thing in existence? Like, if it was Newt Gingrich or something, I could be like, Hey, Newt Gingrich, man, he's a piece of shit. And it's true. Newt Gingrich is, in fact, a piece of shit. But I can't call Rick Santorum a piece of shit. No, I can't do that, because it would be a compliment. I would be elevating him to the status of a piece of shit. Rick Santorum is way worse than a piece of shit. After all, what has a piece of shit ever really, truly done? Like, if I wanted to insult a piece of shit, I would call it Rick Santorum. I'd be like, hey, you piece of shit, you know what you are? Rick Santorum! And that the piece of shit would commit suicide in shame that I had, because he'd done something so bad that I resorted to calling him Rick Santorum. That's how bad that fuck is. You know, a lot of people, they get into this hyperbole around election season. They're like, if fucking Sarah Palin wins, I'm leaving for Canada. Or, you know, if Bush gets a second term, I'm leaving. Or, you know, a lot of conservatives now, they're like, if Obama gets a second term, I'm going to, I don't know, I guess they think they're somewhere more conservative than the United States. I guess they could go to the fucking Congo or something. I don't fucking know. Fuck that shit, though. <laughs> if Rick Santorum wins, I'm going to the fucking moon. I am leaving this planet. I'm gonna go to the moon, and all I need to bring is like a dominatrix and a fucking Game Boy Advance so I can play Tetris. That's all I need. That's all I need to survive. Literally, sometimes at night, I place my head on the pillow as I gently drift off into sleep, and like, instead of counting sheep, I just try to think of things that are worse than the prospect of a Rick Santorum presidency. That's what I try to do, to comfort myself, to lull myself into a state of slumber. And I sit there like, well, what if I got AIDS? Would that be worse than Rick Santorum being my president? No, not even fucking close. What if I got cancer and I was dying slowly and it was in my lymph nodes and I was going through chemotherapy and all my hair fell out and I got all gaunt and skinny and skeletal and I had big dark rings under my eyes and everyone's like, oh, we're praying for you, amazing atheist, even though you're an atheist. And then other people are like, amazing atheist is facing this with courage and conviction. And then slowly I wither away and die. Would that be worse? Not even fucking close! Not even close! Not even in- not even a contender! What if I had a hemorrhoid the size of a golf ball? And every time I took a shit it was pure, unmitigated agony. Still not close. What if it was the size of a lemon? A lemon-sized hemorrhoid. Would that be worse? No. No, still not worse. What about if it was the size of a volleyball? No. Maybe that would be a tie. Maybe that would be a tie with the prospect of Rick Santorum becoming president. What if someone nailed my face to a tree and covered me with fire ants? No. No. I think I'd still rather do that than look at a picture of Rick Santorum and think to myself, that's my leader! <laughs> so why is Rick Santorum so awful? Well, first of all, he, uh, he signed a pledge that says he's gonna ban pornography. Yeah, he's gonna ban pornography, folks. Wow. Hey, uh, attention, everyone! You're now a criminal! <laughs> Congratulations! And you know why he's gonna ban pornography? Because Jesus wouldn't like it. I got a bunch of quotes from the guy here on my laptop in his own fucking words, so you can listen to the stuff that's coming out of his goddamn crazy-ass mouth. This is what he says about internet regulation. He says, uh, the internet is a powerful source for good, as we all know, a powerful source for bad in this country. There are limits that have to be put in place. Your free speech rights can be incredibly harmful to somebody else. 
Wow! The only candidate who has the balls to come right out and say, free speech is dangerous. Yeah! How? Like, Republicans, how are you even fucking considering voting for this fuck? Like, how does it even cross your mind? Like, to me, like, even if I was conservative, even if I was Republican, even if I was, like, a guy that still had a Bush Cheney sticker on the back of my fucking car, even if I was that guy, I think I would still rather just nail my testicles to a plank of wood than even, like, let it cross my mind, like, maybe Santorum. What are you talking about? Um... Here's another thing he said. This is on allowing gays to marry and raise children. He said, uh, robbing children of something they need, they deserve, they have a right to. You may rationalize that it, this isn't true, but you know in your own life and in your own heart that it is true. Okay, yeah. Wow, that is the best argument ever. I, I love this argument. You know, you know in your heart. I could say that about anything. Like Hitler could have said that. I know Godwin's law, blah, blah, blah. But Hitler could have said that. He really could have. He could have been like, yeah, you know, some people might say that extinguishing the Jews is a bad idea, but you know in your heart that it's not. It's a good idea. You know in your heart. Like, well, that's not an argument at all. That's just like, yeah, well, you know, X equals... So, uh, okay, here, here's another thing. Obama was talking about how every kid should go to college. Like, typical president shit. What fucking president doesn't say every kid should go to college? But this is what uh, Rick Santorum had to say about it. He said, The hubris of this president to think that he knows best for you. This is the kind of snobbery that we see from those who think they know how to run our lives. This is about children going to college to get an education, to get better lives for the future. And he is staunchly against it. He thinks that anyone who is for it is a snob. That snobby president wants our children to go to college. Okay, uh, here he is. Uh, this is him citing some anti-poverty expert. He said, uh, he found that even fathers in jail who had abandoned their kids were still better than no father at all in their children's lives. And this is against gay marriage. Because, oh, yeah, lesbian parents or uh, even just single parents, that's worse than having a father who's in prison. It's better if you're growing up like, yeah, my dad's in prison. That's a better feeling than, uh, you know, having, like, some gay parents. You know, like, you'd, you know, oh, it's better to have a father in prison than lesbian parents, obviously. What? Um, I'm certainly not going to have a federal law that bans adoption for gay couples. Well, that's good. But then he goes on to say, when there are only gay couples in certain states. That's right. Um, you know, like, Arkansas has no gay couples. None. There's no gay couples in Arkansas. There's no gay couples in Mississippi. They're all, they're all in New York and California and Massachusetts. That's the only place you see that kind of gay shit going on. There's no gay couples anywhere else. Like, does, does this man live in reality? Does he occupy the same existence that everyone else does? Or is he like some visitor from some horrible fifth dimension where like it's like we still like li like we, we literally live in that leave it to beaver-esque universe and he like comes home and chastises his son and then chastises his wife and smokes his pipe and like I'm always right because I'm a white American male. <laughs> like what? What the fucking shit are you talking about you crazy depraved motherfucker? I don't know. Okay, so here he is on um, here he is on health insurance. The answer is not what we can do to prevent deaths because of a lack of health insurance. I reject that number completely, that people, die, that people die in America because of lack of health insurance. He rejects it completely that people die in America because of lack of health insurance. Well, Harvard University disagrees with him. Their study shows that 45,000 people die in America every year because they lack health insurance. But you don't even need fucking Harvard University. All you need to do is, um, think for one measly fucking millisecond. Just like, do people die in America because they have no health insurance? Yes! Instantly, you should know that. Like, I was at Waffle House uh, a couple days ago, and there was a guy that was new there that put some toast in the toaster. Well, they put bread in the toaster, and it had butter on it. And he, he put buttered bread in the toaster, and the head cook was like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do that. And the guy was like, oh, I didn't know. 
It's like, I'm sitting there thinking, like, you should easily just know instantly that you can't do that. That should be just fucking obvious. And now I have a presidential candidate who, who's just as dumb as that fucking guy working at Waffle House who doesn't know that you can't put buttered bread in the fucking toaster. Because this fuck just doesn't, like, it doesn't even occur to him. Like, oh, maybe, you know, it's bad if, you know, you don't have health insurance, you might die. I don't know. He doesn't, he's like, well, I reject that notion. How do you reject that notion? That's like walking outside on a rainy day and like rejecting the notion that you're gonna get wet. Who gives a fuck what notion you reject, you dumbass? Um, what else he said? Oh, this is a, this is on the Catholic priest uh, scandal. This is a, this is his explanation for why priests were molesting kids. He said, priests, like all of us, are affected by culture. When the culture is sick, every element in it becomes infected. While it is no excuse for this scandal, it is no surprise that Boston, a seat of academic, political, and cultural liberalism in America, lies at the center of the storm. Lies at the center of the storm? I kind of think that the Vatican lies at the center of the storm. But are you really saying, like, the priests molested these kids because they were negatively affected by liberalism? Like, it wasn't a bunch of hippies going around molesting the fucking kids. It wasn't like this, like, happened at Ben and Jerry's, like, we're giving the kids a tour of the factory, and next thing you know, we're molesting them. It wasn't like a bunch of liberals who did this. This was a bunch of conservative Catholic fucking priests. You think that they were affected by, like, the culture of liberalism? What the f- I, I don't know. Okay, this is him on, uh, on the Massachusetts Supreme Court decision to approve same-sex marriage. This is an issue just like 9-11. Do I really need to read the rest of the fucking quote? No! He just compared fucking gay marriage being legalized with 9-11. He's like, yeah, this is just like 9-11. Gays getting married, 3,000 people being killed by terrorists. Same. Like, I, I almost want to fucking cry right now just because of how stupid that is. Like, it's frustrating to me. I hope it's frustrating to you because it fucking should be. There are people out there who support this guy to be the leader of all of us. Every last person. You and me and, well, everyone in America anyway. The rest of the world just gets to look on and laugh. Like, ha 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 ha, fucking stupid Americans. Yeah, until he declares war on Iran, which is something else he says he wants to do. Until he starts nuking them and the fallout spreads throughout the world. Then you guys probably won't be laughing too much anymore. Um, this, is, this is the last quote I'm going to read. Because this is just like, this just shows me that this guy is insane. Um, this is him on the war in Iraq. He says, as the hobbits are going up Mount... I'm not fucking kidding, okay? This is a real quote. As the hobbits are going up Mount Doom, the eye of Mordor is being drawn somewhere else. It's being drawn to Iraq. You know what? I want to keep it on Iraq. I don't want the eye to come back to the United States. What? 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 He, why is he... Why is he referencing Lord of the Rings, and what does this even mean? He's, why didn't you just, like, the Republican line on this, he's just spouting the Republican line, like, we gotta fight them there so they don't come here, and it's bullshit, but why would you phrase it like that? Why are you fucking talking about hobbits climbing Mount Doom? Like, there's a time and a place for, like, nerdy pop culture references, and that's not it. That's not it at all. And your reference doesn't even make sense. It's like the hobbits are climbing the mountain and the eye is here. And if it's on Iraq, you don't want it on Iraq because then it'll be on America and the hobbits. There's gay midgets on the hill. And what? what? Like, America, please, don't, don't let this man run for president. Like, I can't even be excited for it as a, a YouTube commentator, comedian, whatever you want to call me. I can't even be excited from that perspective. Please don't make me have to make videos about this person. Please don't make me have to read more quotes from this person and talk about them like they're important because they shouldn't be important. Okay? Just, just please, for once, just, just listen to the voice of reason and just don't fucking ever, under any circumstances, consider voting for this guy. Please! <sighs> hey everybody, brief update on Not Productive. We've just approved a final draft of the site's wireframe, and there's still 33 days left in our drive to uh, help raise money for that. 
and we appreciate your continued support. Thank you.